the union cabinet's approval of the unified pension scheme on Saturday drew varied reactions from the opposition. Congress President Malikarjun Kharge said that the U in UPS symbolizes the Narendra Modi government's U-turns, while AAP leader Sanjay Singh called it worse than the NPS or the National Pension Scheme that has, that has been in place since 2004. The government's spin doctors dismissed suggestions of the government backtracking on pension reforms. Their argument was that unlike the old pension scheme, the UPS is contributory funded, that is employees also contribute. The fact that the UPS would put an additional burden on the exchequer was nothing to debate about, obviously. What's however indisputable is that the government made a U-turn on the NPS to please employees ahead of the elections in four states this year, JNK, Haryana, Maharashtra and Jharkhand. The committee to review the pension system was set up in the wake of the BJP's defeat in the Himachal Pradesh Assembly election. One of the factors that was said to have contributed to the loss was Congress's promise to restore the old pension system. Then Congress-led governments in Chhattisgarh and Rajasthan had implemented the OPS which did not help it retain power in subsequent assembly elections. Now the BJP finds it safer to roll back on pension reforms to come up with the UPS which guarantees assured pension, inflation indexation and lump sum payment at superannuation. The U-turn on NPS is not a first in Modi 3.0. Rahul Gandhi's stamp was visible when the centre backtracked on lateral entry into bureaucracy, as well as a series of measures taken by BJP-led governments. These developments have led to jokes in political circles that if you want the government to change a policy or adopt a new policy, the best person to ensure that is Rahul Gandhi. The BJP's allies may also claim credit for a few changes or U-turns. Union Minister and Lok Jan Sakti Party Chief uh, Chirag Paswan and JDU leader KC Tyagi had lent their voices to Gandhi's attack on the lateral entry policy. Again, it was because of the TDP's support to the opposition's demand for a JPC on the work bill that the government had to agree to it. Credit Gandhi or the BJP's partners. The fact is that U-turns have characterized the 11 weeks since Modi took oath as the Prime Minister for a third time. Is it coalition compulsion or a knee-jerk reaction to the opposition? That's what I'm going to discuss in this episode of Politically Correct. Even if the government were to steer the course without bothering about coalition partners, who would rock the boat? Not Nitish Kumar, because only the BJP can keep him in the CM's chair. The only thing he cares about. Not Chandrababu Naidu, because he needs to deliver on his people promises and give his son Lokesh a solid platform as his successor before the TDP chief thinks of becoming a kingmaker in New Delhi. Not even Chirag Paswan, who has turned out to be a worthy successor to his late father Ramilas Paswan. Chirag has been riding on Modi's popularity as his Hanuman, quote unquote, in order to consolidate his base among the Dalits in Bihar. He is too pragmatic a politician to let one issue jeopardize his equations with his Ram, Narendra Modi. Other BJP partners in the NDA, say Eknath Sindhi of the Shiv Sena or Anupriya Patel of the Apnadal, will face an existential crisis if they think of walking out on the BJP. Hypothetically, if the worst comes to worst and some of these allies do reduce the government to a minority in the Lok Sabha or do decide to reduce the government to a minority, who would form the alternative government? The India bloc might look rock solid in parliament, but they are a divided lot outside. Look at how the Kolkata rape and murder case has exposed the chinks in this partnership. With Gandhi attacking the Mamata Banerjee led government for, her, for its uh, attempt to save the accused, I am quoting him, attempt to save the accused. Gandhi however looked isolated in the India bloc as other partners took a major stance and refrained from questioning Banerjee. SP leader Akhilesh Yadav, for instance, accused the BJP of doing politics in this case. That Mamta is not a great fan of Rahul is hardly a secret. Non-Congress leaders in the India bloc from the SP, the AAP and the TMC among others have been interacting frequently keeping the Congress out. Mamta Banerjee chose to attend the Niti Aayog meeting last month 
while chief ministers of other India bloc ruled states boycotted it. Banerjee visited jail Delhi CM Arvind Kejriwal's residence in Delhi to meet his wife Sunita Kejriwal. Earlier, she met Sharad Pawar and Uddhav Thakre in Mumbai. Akhilesh Yadav was a special invitee at the TMC's Martyrs Day rally in Kolkata last month. These deliberations are interesting given how these regional parties have grown at the cost of the Congress. They are united in anti modiism but whether they will remain so to prop up a Congress-led government and help in its revival remains a million dollar question. Whether the Congress will be ready to accept Banerjee or any other non-Congress leader as the Prime Minister if the opportunity arises is another million dollar question. So if there is no threat from the Allies or the India bloc at this stage, what explains the Modi government's U-turns? The answer lies in the confusion around what hit the party in the last Lok Sabha election. The general narrative is that the 400 power slogan cost the BJP as the SCST OBCs grew suspicious of its intent about reservation. Not everybody is convinced though. PM Modi himself, as I am told by multiple BJP leaders, is still asking party colleagues what went wrong in the Lok Sabha polls. Nobody would talk about his popularity graph, obviously, but many have raised questions about the 400 power narrative that, how, that it hurt the BJP. If this slogan cost the BJP in UP, Maharashtra, Rajasthan and a few other states, why did it not affect results in Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Gujarat and other places? In fact, the BJP swept Lok Sabha and Assembly elections in Orissa, where the SCs and STs constitute around 40% of the population. The issue here is that the top BJP leadership is not ready to tackle pertinent questions. Why did the BJP Karakartas and RSS volunteers go cold in the elections? Who advised JP Nadda to declare that the BJP has become so competent that it does not need the RSS? What is the criterion for inducting outsiders into the BJP? History sheeter Sunil Pandey of Bihar being the latest case. Who was responsible for giving tickets to outsiders and for what considerations? Who is accountable for the party's internal survey agencies that gave misleading reports about winnable candidates? Who was responsible for the arbitrary distribution of party tickets? A veteran BJP leader told me that when he was a young party worker, he went to see Sundar Singh Bhandari, who was a powerful general secretary then, without any appointment at 9 Ashoka Road in Delhi, where he was staying. And then he told me that Bhandari had no house help then. He asked me to sit and went inside. After a while, Bhandari came out holding a tray with a cup of tea, biscuits and namkeen. I was a young BJP worker. But Bhandari ji had so much affection and respect for Karikarthas. Look at our leaders today. That was a veteran BJP leader telling me. He said that today's party leaders need to read Dattopan Thengri's Karikartha, that book. He quoted a BJP reporter as saying that even Sanjay Mayuk, BJP's national media co-in-charge, has no qualms disconnecting Union Mr. Hardeep Puri's online interaction with journalists. Puri wanted to answer a question even after Mayuk asked him to wind up. So Mayuk disconnected it. And so that leader told me, if this is what they do to ministers, think of how they treat ordinary karikartas. This arrogance is creating a gulf between us and party workers. I'm quoting a veteran party leader. Be that as it may, the U-turns in governance point to a bigger crisis in the BJP, the crisis of conviction. Two of the party's three core agendas, Ayodhya Ram Temple and Article 370, have been fulfilled. The third, the implementation of the UCC, is not gaining much traction. The implementation of the first two did not pay any electoral dividends either. These three issues formed the core of the BJP's politics. Now that these issues are no longer electorally productive, the BJP is struggling with the Modi wave waning the party looks all the more confused. That's what these U-turns in governance reflect. As a BJP leader told me, I'm talking about another leader and I'm quoting him here. Rahul Gandhi reminds you of John Bunyan. He that is down needs fear no fall. 
So Rahul Gandhi can talk about caste censors, Adani's, Ambani's and what not. He has nothing to lose. Modi government's U-turns seem to follow the next line. He that is low, no pride. It's undermining Brand Modi as a strong and decisive, which is the BJP's only USP today. That's all from me in this episode of Politically Correct. Thanks for watching.